Kia ora, Helen Brahms here. Oh, God, what home am I here? Coming to you live from Jeepers, where am I? Deming, New Mexico. Hope you're all having a super fantastic sparkling day. We have had an incredible day. Um, yeah, sorry about the hair. That's <laughs> what happens when you drive. You tend to pull on it a bit. Um, it has been an incredible, incredible day. It was a driving day. It was seven hours tra total travel time with our stops and everything. Um... Let's see, we traveled from Tucson to Deming today, which was like 196 miles, I think it was. I think that's what it was. I don't remember. I think it was somewhere around there. Um, but um, we left Tucson this morning at 9.43, and I just realized in my notes I wrote PM instead of AM, but it was definitely this morning. Um, got away a little later than we had anticipated, but um, first of all, I took Zephy down to the dog park, let her have a run around. There was about five or six other dogs in there, and um, she goes into the park, and these dogs start coming up to her, and of course, they're bigger than her. Her tail is curled up between her legs, and uh, after about five minutes, it's out, and it's wagging, and she's like running around, running circles around these other dogs, and the other dogs would come up to her, and she would just take off, you know, put a little burst of speed on, and all of that sort of stuff, and so they were calling her Zippy Zephy, <laughs> or Zippy, and no, they were calling her Zippy instead of Zephy, so that was kind of funny, um, and then they decided it was Zippy Zephy, uh, so we had an awesome day, she was probably down there for about, I think we were down there for about 30 minutes, just letting her run around, um, we got back to the van, and got back to the rig, and disconnected the water and the power, that was the last thing to be done before we got back, Oh, before we went to the dog park, um, then we pulled the sides and pulled the jacks up, did a final inspection, turned the gas off, and got in the I got in the rig and drove. And it was nine forty three when we pulled out of our parking space. Um, I always one of the things that I always do um, before. I'm just gonna correct this AM PM thing is driving me nuts. Um, before we um, do, is I always take a, a photograph of the odometer so that I know. Um, what mileage we will when we start, but when I take the picture of the odometer, it's the last thing I do before I put the before I put um, sparkles in gear and, and start moving. So I've got that time stamped as well for when we left. Um, I don't do it when I arrive though. I'm not sure why I don't do that. Probably because I do it every time I leave. And there wouldn't be any difference except for the time stamp. But anyway, um, so we left there. We did do three rest areas along the way because of the distance that we were driving. Um, we did one, um, when was that one? That one was 320, yeah, I did them around the 60 mile marker. We drove about 60 miles before I had a break, because um, that gave us just over an hour on the road, and then we'll take a break. And the first one, um, we got out, we walked around, it was cold. Um, at that rest area, um, Zephy did her thing, we went for a walk around, they had all these paved areas, but then they had these this gravel area where the dog park areas were and all that and then they had these big signs that said poisonous snakes and insects warning and I was like great <laughs> but then I thought hopefully it's too cold and they're still hibernating but I'm like I'm like looking all around for them and Zephy's just like wherever the leash will take her not worrying about anything and I'm like quick where, where are you walking where are you where are you and I'm like trying to figure out where I'm stepping making sure I'm not stepping on anything poisonous um so yeah so we had a nice walk it was very it was brisk very brisk at this one. It was because it was like 47 degrees outside at this um, rest area. And as we're coming back, we came back through the causeway in the building where the restrooms are. And there were these um, two truckers standing there and they were talking to this guy on a bicycle that we had passed um, just before we turned into the rest area. We had passed him on the, free, on the freeway there. And um, they asked him where he was, where he was cycling to. And he says, I'm in the middle of cycling around the world. And there's a like, wow and you're in this dead end place in the middle of nowhere <laughs> so um as we left we saw him fixing his tire one of his tires must have um sprung leaks who's taking the inner tube out and replacing it um but yeah so there was this guy there who's in the process of cycling around the world and i would have loved to have um stopped and talked with him but these two truckers had him engaged in conversation and i wasn't going to interrupt i was going to let them have their time um so then the next one we stopped at was two miles from the arizona new mexico border um border um, state line and we stopped there and had lunch and <laughs> the second oh but be, was it that one yeah it was after we left the first parking thing um Zevi's now really getting really good when I tell her I says come on let's go buckle up she'll actually I'll be sitting in the driver's seat and I'll have her um her lead in my hand her safety lead and I'll say come on let's buckle up and she'll actually walk up to me so I can actually click it onto her harness which is really cool so 
That's not something I have trained her to do with a treat or anything. Like I have trained her lots of other things with treats. That's just something I just keep saying to her every time. And she walks up to me and clips and we clip her in. And she stands there while I does it. She doesn't try and pull away. And she makes sure that I have an, um, that she's standing in a position where I can easily clip it onto her thing for her. And so we start driving down the road and she's standing on the engine hump. And she decides that she wants to get up on the dashboard. So she takes this flying leap and suddenly ends up in a pile on the floor. <laughs> With this dazed look on her face, like then she's like looking around, going, "What happened?" And I'm like, "I said I told you you couldn't go up there while you were on your lead." So the poor dog had a wake up call on the fact that she cannot get up on. I mean, she's tried climbing up there in the past, but it stopped her. Today, she for some reason she decided she was going to jump. I don't know if she thought that jumping would um, supersede the climbing. Not sure what. Um, but uh, the drive was absolutely stunning today. There was, I mean, I love trees and rolling grass and lakes and oceans and rivers and all of that as part of scenery. But today was something, it was like a 180 degree. It was you know, barren desert for as far as you can see. And the um, one of the weather, I've got like three weather apps on my phone and I check them all and just kind of go in the middle um, for temperature wise and all of that sort of stuff um, as an average. And, um, but they were all, to and one of them um, actually tells you, you know how far visibility is going to be. And one of them said it was going to be like 10 mile visibility. You could see forever. It was, it was amazing. There wasn't a cloud in the sky. It was clear blue skies. Um, no wind, which was awesome. Not even a, oh, what was really, I'll talk about that one in a second. Cause it, that's, it's kind of amazing. This one. Um, but it was, and we're looking out over this great vastness of barren land, and it was just amazing. And we're passing all these signs about dust storms and what to do in a dust storm, how you pull off the, pull out of the travel lanes and stop your vehicle, turn the engine off, take your foot off the brake, turn your lights off, stay buckled, um, and don't move until you can see again. Um, and this is what you do with, with a dust storm. And there's all these signs along the along the I-10 there telling you what to do in dust storms. But you could see this barren land for as far as you could see, and then as far as you could see, it was ringed with all these mountains and hills and it was just stunning. And in some places, the um, the mountains looked like they were cardboard cutouts. It was just really, it was so clear, but because of the distance, there was no depth to the hills or the mountains and stuff. And there'll be like these three different, there was one where it was um, like three different shades where somebody had taken like um, a charcoal color piece of paper, um, a dark, a very dark dusky blue and um, like a, a dark brown and it cut these things out and layered them one on top of the other um, with the different heights and stuff. It was just amazing and I actually got quite emotional looking at the scenery today. It was, um, today was just, um, it was all about the love today. It really was. I was having a blast driving. I was relaxed. I was having so much fun. I was singing at the top of my voice, but I'm surprised I still have one. Um, and uh, I was just having a blast behind the wheel, but this scenery was incredible. And the whole time we're going along, we're gradually going up. Um, like Tucson's somewhere around 24 to 2,600 um, feet above sea level. And um, where I am in Deming is around 45, 46, somewhere around there. So it's like about, it's about a 2,000 foot difference. Um, so we've been gradually going uphill all day. Yes, there was some downhill bits, but it's been basically been mostly going uphill. Um, we had another stop. Um, let's see. So we stopped at just before the state line for lunch. Our last um, rest area stop that we did was just past the um, Continental Divide. And it's my second time on the road going across the Continental Divide. The first time was almost 10 years ago. It was in June of 2010. And it was either the 14th or the 15th of June, because I can't remember if it was the day we arrived in Arizona or the day before we arrived in Arizona. I would have to go back and have a look at my blog that I kept during that time. Um, but we were coming on the I-40 heading um, westbound. So we were westbound on the I-40 when we were moving from um, Virginia to California. So that was back then that we crossed the divide then. And then today I got to cross the Continental Divide going eastbound on the I-10. So um, it was kind of cool, I thought. And so I stopped. There was a rest area about a mile and a half past the divide where you could actually pull over. And it was it wasn't um, it was all parallel parking in there too, which was kind of interesting. I parallel parked the RV. No problems at all. 
but it helps when you can just drive in and pull up behind the one in front of you. <laughs> you didn't have to back. didn't have to shuffle. It was good. I had plenty of space. Um, and then took a photo pointing backwards, and I did post that one on my um, Facebook page earlier today. So um, then after that, it was um, we were like 30 minutes from the campground, and so and there was a Walmart, the exit before the one that we had to get off for the campground. So we stopped at the Walmart, got a couple of things, got a couple of... Um, when I was working with the trainer with Zephy, um, she told me about this um, game that you can play with the dog that um, has a bowl upside down. And she says, just go to like Walmart and pick up the oil pan. And she says, it's a round thing. It's got a spout on it. It's plastic. It's like two or three bucks. And you turn it upside down and it's big enough that Zephy can actually stand on it with all four feet if she does it correctly. So um, we actually had her doing something like that with a um, with a dog bowl that wasn't quite as big as what the Walmart one is. So um, it's been a while since, and I keep forgetting about it when I go to a Walmart, so I remembered today to go and get that. So I got that, um, got a lighter so I can um, check out my oven tomorrow um, and see if I can get that working. So I've got to go online and see if I can get that working. The only problem is, is that there is no internet connection here, no Wi-Fi at the campground at all. If you want to check your email, you have to go to the library, which is up in the main building, and they have a, get this, it says it, it says it right here. It says, um, where is it? Email. Modem connection in library. Modem. And this day, with all the Wi-Fi and everything else, they have a modem connection. I don't know if this is something that they started when they started this camp, and they've never updated it or what, but, um, they said modem connection, but there is no Wi-Fi available in this camp. Um, the phone is going to work fine. My hotspots will work perfectly. So I can at least get online with those tomorrow to get some work done and um, and um, find my own my manual to operate my stove, my oven. The stove top works good. I've got to operate the oven. So that'll be good. Um, when I got here, there was a slight mix up on the reservation because she turns around and said, oh, that'll be $136 and something. I looked at her and went, excuse me. I said it's only supposed to be like 22 bucks a night with the escapees. She said, yes, but you're here for a week. I went, no, I'm only here for two nights. And so she had a look at the reservation. She said, oh, okay. And I said, look, even on the front, it's it, on the front it had me here for three nights. And their system said I was here for a week. And I'm like, I did change the reservation to two nights. And um, so she finally had, so what she ended up having to do was cancel the entire reservation, redo it, get it priced right. And then, oh, and then she turns around and tells me it was $60. I went, no, 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 no. So even with taxes added, it doesn't come to 60 bucks. And then she pulls out this little thing which had all of the prices listed for the number of nights, what your taxes are going to be and what the total is and per night. And so I said to her, I says, look, even if I said I'm on a 50 amp, it's 22 bucks a night plus the thing comes to 24, whatever it is. I said, you know, that's 48 bucks plus add the 92 cents, you know, times that, but that's 49 something. It's not even, so there's no way it could be 60 bucks. And so she ended up having to cancel the entire reservation, redoing it, and finally got the right price. So um, she said, I'm so glad you caught that before before you, um, before I hit the payment button. I'm like, well, yeah, $132 to down to $49. There's a big difference. You would have noticed that one. Um, so got here, um, got to the parking space, got everything set up. Um, basically we just put the slides out, uh, put the feet down, put the slides out, put the awning out, went in and connected the water and the power, did some filling on the water tank while I was connecting up the power. And, um, once that was done, um, we came came back in, got Zephy, and we went over to the dog park. And they've got a – it's not as big as the ones we've been in for the last the last three that we've been in. Um, but it's a decent size. She was able to get a good run in there, down to the far end, run back again, and all that sort of stuff. So we were over there for probably about 20 minutes while she just ran off some energy and all of that sort of stuff. And then she was just kind of like – I said, you ready to go? And she just walked over to where her leash was because I hang the leash near the gate on the fence there. And so she just walked over with her leash. And I said, are you ready to go? And she just walks over to the leash and went, Okay. And we came back here, and she just got stuck into her food. She had a big feed and a big drink, and so she was good to go. Um, but today, I um, one of the things that I have been doing each morning, um, because I've been listening to the book The Power, and as um, most of you know, um, that's part of the Secret series, and I've listened to it multiple times on via audio and things. And for some reason, the last time I listened to it, just clicked. Something in it just clicked with me. And um, so that took me probably about 10, 11, 12, whatever times it was to click, but it clicked. And so today, and so what I've been doing this trip is each morning when I get up is I set the intention of the day. Um, 
what I expect the day's going to turn out like. And it comes in... Ha- oh, hang on. Look at this. Look at that sunset. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Up, up, periscope. We've got double up periscope over here. Hang on. Up, periscope. <laughs> We've got the two periscopes up. <laughs> And a gorgeous sunset going on. So we have. <laughs> um, so yeah. So what I've been doing, um, especially on the trips, when we when we go to hit the road, I set the intention that today's going to be a great day, blue skies, sunshine. It's going to be a gorgeous day for driving. Um, it will be. Um, I see. I'm trying not to put any negative words in there, but just using words of love instead. You know, just going to be a. Um, so I just turned around and said, it's going to be a, you know, like this morning I said, I said to Zephy, I said, it's going to be an awesome day today. We're going to have an amazing trip. There's going to be little traffic on the road, knowing full well that it's a weekday. Um, and, um, we're on the I-10, which is a major thoroughfare, but I said, we're going to have little traffic. We're going to have clear blue skies and sunshine because it was already starting off that way. Um, and I said, there's going to be, um, it's going to be a windless day, windless day. And, um, instead of saying no wind. <laughs> so we said windless day. Um, and we said it's just going to be an awesome day. And we're driving down the road. And as, we're, as we get, once we hit the freeway um, and we're driving along and stuff, I'm just saying as, as these trucks are overtaken, I said, have a great trip, you know, enjoy your day. Hope you have a super fantastic sparkling day. And then go off singing at the top of my voice. And I was trying to think of every song that I knew that had the words clear, you know, had the words blue skies in it. So I was singing, you know, um, and of course, I don't know all the lyrics to all the songs, so I was just singing the portions that I knew and making up the rest of them. Um, so I was just having a blast behind the wheel. I was very relaxed in the driving today. Um, I didn't turn those, didn't turn the stereo on today because I was having so much fun making my own noise. Uh, <laughs> but it was really, really cool. And I'm driving along um, the freeway there, and I keep, and every now and again, um, I turn and go, "Oh, look at this, Zephy." I said, "It's a gorgeous day for driving. We've got little traffic." clear blue skies there's um it's windless and up ahead i see this flag flying and the flag's almost out like side almost sideways and um and i'm like looking at it and i'm going and we have no wind today and with that the flag dropped down against the flagpole like the wind suddenly just went out of it and we went past that area and no wind buffering, no nothing. I did have some wind buffering with a couple of trucks that went past because I had a series where I had a truck in front of me and I had three trucks overtaking me um, one after the other. So there was a lot of buffering with that. But overall, we had no wind buffering the entire day. Even if we did see flags in the distance flying, by the time we got to them, they're limp. Um, so it was awesome. Um, put it out there. We're wishing everybody. And, and then, oh, then there was the um, the cop. He was, where were we? Arizona. So we're still in Arizona. There was an unmarked cop car that um, I'm thinking it was a Mustang. And I know all my guys who know cars will may know what this was. But I recall seeing Mustangs with the gas cap in the middle at the back with GT on it. And this had GT on it. And it was a two door. And it was done up as a cop car. I'm pretty sure it was a Mustang. I can't be 100% sure, but I know the GT and the ones I've seen the GT on um, were Mustangs, but they were normally four doors, but this was a two door one. And um, it had the lights in the back and he was pulling over truckers. He, we passed him twice. Um, the first time we passed him was before the first um, rest stop that we came to. Then after we left that rest stop, um, actually it was after the, it was, yeah, just before we got to the one where we stopped for lunch, which was two miles inside the, the state line, we passed him again. And same car, and so I thought, wow, they're getting really souped up with their vehicles. <laughs> so they were doing their job. Then when we were in New Mexico, not long after we passed the um, the state line, um, we we're probably about five miles into um, into New Mexico. Over on the other side of the road, on the westbound side, we could see all these lights flashing. I thought, oh, what's going on over here? There was a car pulled over. There were border patrol were going through the car. There were two highway patrol cars behind, or state police cars behind there, behind the car that was pulled over. Then two um, border patrol cars. All of them had their lights going. So some that got somebody crossing the border on something. Um, I don't even know where the border check was in relation to where we were. And then as I'm 
as I get past that, um, I can see in the distance flashing lights coming towards me as another highway patrol person came up to join up with the ones that were already pulled over. So very exciting. Look at that sunset. Very exciting day um, with that. But just having so much fun out there on the road and um, just putting out the intention that, you know, it's going to be a great drive today, clear blue skies. I mean, even the days that, um, the day that we had the couple of passing showers, you know, it didn't deter from the gorgeous day of driving that it was. So it's just taking your intentions, putting them out there for the day, and then expecting them to happen. Um, it was just, that's how it was. So we just put the intentions out there. Just putting it over here so you can see that sunset. Um, we just put the um, the intentions out there um, so that you could, you know, so we could have a great day. Um, as we're passing cop cars who were sitting on the side of the road, those that had ones pulled over, we're saying, you know, th we, were, we were thanking the officer, you know, as I was driving past, thanking the officers for um, for protecting the roads and keeping them safe for us to have a, a phenomenal drive and that sort of stuff. So everything that we were seeing in some way, I was, you know, talking to the truck drivers as they overtook me and saying, you know, have a great day. I hope you're having a super fantastic spark. And they couldn't hear a word I was saying. I was just putting it out there for them and wish them well on their traps, you know, because they, they drive a lot of hours, those guys. Um, and then, of course, you had the cops that were protecting everybody on the roads and all of that and keeping everybody safe. And so it was an awesome, awesome day. And But I loved the thing is that as we're driving along, you see these flags in the distance flying. And by the time we get to them, the flags will limp. And then we would pass them. And I don't have I couldn't really see in the mirrors if they started up again or not but I don't care we had no wind today it was awesome so that's been my whole when we, the day we started this whole adventure was so like we're going to get on the road we're going to have amazing adventures along the way we're going to have great days of driving um, our driving days are going to be awesome um, we're going to have really good weather while we're driving and I can't complain about any of the weather we have had on our driving days um, you know, we got to Tucson. Um, that was the day that we had the couple of showers. We got there. We got all hooked up and everything else. And after we had hooked everything up, we come and we sit down and probably about within 10, 15 minutes of us coming inside from hook, being there and hooking up, the heavens opened and we had a big downpour. Um, but knowing that we had had a great run through on the driving was just amazing. So it's um, it's been... It's been such a great experience so far that um, today I actually got inspired to start writing again. So tonight I haven't watched any – I went to watch a movie the other night and I thought, you know, I just feel like listening to music. So since I got my little Bluetooth speaker – my little – hang on, I've got it here. Since I got my little Bluetooth speaker, this little guy here, um, I've actually been pulling out the laptop at night and that it's hooked up to the laptop. It's not hooked up to my phone. But just playing like classical music. Usually it's been El Devo because I like listening El Devo because I like listening to them with their operatic stuff slash whatever. Um, pop music crossover, their crossover stuff. Um, and when I'm on a plane, I like listening to them as I read. Um, and so there's been the evenings, like I put a movie on the other night and I probably got five minutes into it. I really don't want to watch a movie. So I just turned it off, turned the music on and just sat and read. And tonight it'll probably be doing pretty much the same, but I do have an urge to write. So there will definitely be some writing involved today. Um, because I've got to get down today's experience on the scenery that we saw, you know, as barren as it was and surrounded by those mountains and hills, it was just, it was stunning. It was an, it was an emotional journey as I was driving along. I just got so appreciative of the scenery we were seeing and just how gorgeous it was and everything else that I had a, an emotional reaction to it, um, which happens from time to time because I like my scenery. <laughs> So that's it from me for today. Um, we're here for the next two nights. Um, tomorrow is going to be look at that sunset. Tomorrow is going to be laundry day because I did not do laundry while we we're in Tucson, which I plan to do. Um, and I'm just glad I waited as well because it's only a buck twenty five to wash and a buck twenty five to dry here. So that's going to be awesome. So I will get that um, all taken care of tomorrow, and let Zephy go for a couple of runs in the dog run. Um, maybe we'll go for a walk around the RV park. It's not a very big park but um rv resort um but it's um it's not bad it's all gravel um which which cracks me up because on here it said on the first page on the rules it says please no area mats or rug they kill the grass for the next camper and i like looked out the window and went it's all gravel <laughs> oh i mean tomorrow they've got um they have a 
tomorrow being Valentine's, they have a no meal alone potluck dinner on. So you can take something along. They expect all campers to show up, um, take something along to the um, the clubhouse here, um, take a dish to share, or you can take $2 and a non-perishable canned food um, for the food bank and um, you can eat with everybody else as well but they don't want anybody dining alone tomorrow night next door um, through the fence we can actually go through the gate there's a hotel next door which has um, a restaurant there that does dinner and breakfast so I've, she said if you feel like going over to the quality inn for dinner and breakfast you know they have a restaurant there and so you can go and do that as well so that's it from me for tonight have a super fantastic sparkling evening and we will catch you guys tomorrow hey conera